remember why I left Etsy. And because I haven't filmed in a long time, I took my iPad and I went to my Good Notes app and I took notes. But basically, it's important because I haven't filmed in a while and I did not want to start it. Now, I'm going to talk about why I left Etsy. Now, before I explain that, there's three disclaimers I want to give. One, my braids are screaming. I can't do anything about it. I have braids. Two, which is really relevant. I sell braid toys. I used to sell, hence the title why I left Etsy, I used to sell braid toys also on Etsy. The other thing is, I also sell stationery that are kind of um, birds, owls. I don't know if I have any penguins, I don't think so, but you get it. I even have chickens. Anyway, I collect this. Those are all different kind of parrot species. I do have some bird species that are not parrots. Anyway, uh, but basically I left Etsy. And the reason why I'm making this video is, it's kind of funny. One of my friends, uh, she is, I believe, in New Zealand. Don't quote me on that, but she was not having success with another marketplace that she was on and then I suggested her to go on Etsy. Couple months later, I leave Etsy. So she was like, girl, like you told me to go on Etsy. Why did you leave Etsy? So uh, this video is kind of for her and kind of for everyone else. I do not think Etsy is a bad marketplace. That's very different than Shopify. Shopify is not a marketplace, but we're not gonna talk about the good stuff about Etsy. It's not a horrible place. But these are struggles that I had early on. The other important thing I have to explain is that I, even before Etsy, like four to five years before Etsy, I already had my own website. So I knew that if I was somewhat successful on Etsy, I was just going to move. Um, I had a Wix domain name, but it was for blogging. Kind of relevant. I have birds. I talk about birds. I love birds. So from that, I went to Shopify because based on my little bit of search that I did, Having an e-commerce, because it's different than a regular website. Having an e-commerce website on Shopify was a bit better. So I switched to Shopify. Now, I completely left Etsy. Now, one of the main reasons, which I have my notes, but I'm not going to be annoying and hold it like this for you guys. I'm just going to put it to the side. So every few minutes, I might be glancing there. The first one, it's important that I mention this one. I got a DMCA notice, a copyright notice, if you will. And I know some people are like rolling their eyes and they're like, oh my God, this girl got a copyright notice. She copied someone. She got kicked off, at, off of Etsy. I did not. Um, and so therefore she's not at Etsy. No. So here's what happened. And I do need to show my foraging boxes. This is relevant. So give me one minute. Now on Etsy, on this, uh, I be, it should still be on the left side if I'm not mistaken. There's a section area. Now this is one of the box. This is not a foraging box, but I did not know which section to put it. And rather than having it in an unassigned section, I put it in the foraging box section. Now this is relevant. Um, I do also, I don't know if I mentioned, I do also sell stationery. So, and there's only one of this left. So if anyone wants it, you could get this box, but you could also get them individually. I love how I'm like marketing my toys here, but this is one of the box and then I'll show you guys my other box. Anyway, this is my second box. It's actually for autumn. By the way, heads up, if you want autumnal toys, September 1st, I'll have my collection available. But there you go. It's a fox. These are Cheetos that I put in a foraging box. Ta-da. Ta-da. And yes, I do um, use safe um, food coloring. A lot of people ask me this, I explained it multiple times, but I know someone is going to still ask me this. I use food coloring and I'm literally showing everyone one by one. I could have just done this. Anyway, this is my other box. Now, I have multiple of these boxes, but this is important because I put my autumnal collection. So yeah, let's just put this away. I'll explain what happened. So let's just explain what happened quickly. Basically, I got a copyright notice, I think after a couple of days, I don't even know, but my autumnal collection was released. Quickly after, maybe a few days later, I got this copyright notice. Now, you, in order for you to do a counter notice, it's very important that you understand this is a legal signature that, well, you're technically typing it, but it's a legal document. So I was kind of nervous. Also, I wanted to make sure. Now, I knew 100 in a million percent. I did not copy anyone. I'll explain my process. I have my iPad. So I use Procreate. I draw my illustration. Before that, I used to do it on Adobe, but I stopped Procreate does everything for me. It's also much easier, but I have to transfer that to my Mac. Um, 
Procreate does not have an SVG file. This is important because I use balsa wood. It's just whatever. It's balsa wood. If you know, if you have birds, you know what it is. And I make it an SVG file. For that, I have to use Inkscape. From once I make it an SVG file, I use my X tool machine to cut the balsa. Some of them are scoring. Some of them are engraving. And then I have to also do a cut file. Anyway, long story short. These products are 100% mine. The illustrations are 100% mine. I did not understand at all why they were copyrighted because I'm like, the box is mine. Now, I looked, I like did a deep dive and I tried like reasoning with the seller that did this copyright notice. It's important that I explain this because this um, seller was also international. They were not, I'm in Canada. They were not in Canada. Also, they were like, this does matter to a certain extent because it did get me slightly scared. They are in the double digit thousands of sales on Etsy. So I was like, like I must have messed up somewhere. Where is it? Now, I did few stuff. I dig through all my image, uh, image, uh, images and this is important because I've heard some people like, well, they'll sell their product, but they'll have another product as like a decor and that could go into copyright because you're not selling that kind of decor. I've seen some people actually, like some bigger brands copyright another product, although they're not promoting that product because it's in the background image. This could be an issue. So that was not the case because my background is white with like a faux green plant the other thing is my i 100 percent know the boxes are all original i draw them myself the ones that i don't draw like solar flower and stuff if you know oh i have some solar flowers i like these flowers they look very different than everyone what everyone else is doing and everyone else does really good foraging boxes like i'm not unique or anything in that way but i was just so confused guys so i was like okay um I knew a lawyer friend, contacted my lawyer friend. He had to give me another person because he did not deal with copyright. This lawyer friend told me like, I think I'm not looking too good from that seller's point of view because clearly I did not copy anything. The other thing that I think is important to mention is that I did not use that seller's name, like their business name inside my tags, inside my description. So. Some people will do this. Now I'm gonna give you catnip as an example. I love her artwork. She's very successful. Um, she's like an inspiration. But if you don't know, she does stationery, right? So imagine I sell my stationery and then I put catnip's name either in my description, my tags or whatever, hashtags and stuff. They could send you a cease and desist because that's not legal. <laughs> but it was also not that situation. I also had some people, like I talked to a few people, they're like, is the word forage? <laughs> copyrighted and it's not <laughs> like it'd be such a weird thing to copyright because that's like instead of saying foraging boxes imagine the word gift box is copyrighted so yeah it was not so my um lawyer said okay you're not at fault at all like uh, it seems like one we're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt it was a mistake two and a couple of other reasons why is that they tried pushing me out of the way. Now, the reason why I say this is on Etsy, my foraging boxes were like number one on page number one. And most of them were. I had 12 that were taken off. Now, I also want to mention the reason why I wanted to show you guys my stationary stuff is they have no stationary. They also don't do illustrations at all like the way I do. Um, they'll... Look, I know if you're in the business community or bird community, not business community, I don't want to give too much away. But yeah, they don't do any stationery. They also don't do their own illustrations the way I do. Um, I know one person who does illustrations the way I do and a couple more. They're really talented. But yeah, it was it was just, it was none of those situations. So while waiting, my um, lawyer said do a counter notice. Um, also, but because I'm like... I gotta do my own thing. So I went on Facebook groups. I also went on Reddit groups and they kind of gave me a more in-depth analysis, I guess, of what might have happened. Basically, they just wanted me out because I was selling a lot and I was on number one. And this shop is known to kind of see, I don't want to give too much away, to sell foraging boxes. So a lot of beginner sellers like me, I have over 1,000 sales, so I don't want to say I was a complete beginner, but people like me would initially get scared, especially going against a top seller. Like this person had thousands, like two digit thousands, I'll give you that. So going against someone like that could be scary. So 
one of the main thing most smaller slightly smaller cells the first thing they will do is completely delete their listings because they're like i don't want to be in a bad standing point with etsy so they'll just completely delete it i didn't do that because i knew i didn't copy the second thing they will do is they will wait the two weeks there's like a period if i'm not mistaken it should be two weeks in order to wait for the after you do the counter notice and then they'll really release their products but see when you do that give me one minute guys second scenario basically what happens with this is that once you wait for your listings for two weeks after you've done your counter notice it's not like when you release these products again that you end up being back on the first page if the top seller business person did this to you in order to kind of gain momentum in their own products this could be another reason why the other reason is that like i explained it could be honestly an honest mistake i don't really think so how do you because it's the same niche right so yeah but that's what happened now you might be wondering why i'm explaining this um like i said i had lawyers i had lawyers i did not copy anyone and i've already showed you guys my boxes and stuff they don't have anything like this and they also removed my stationery sticker stationery they have no stitch stickers no stationery that's why initially my guess is like i know they don't have stickers or stationery so it must be maybe i did a mistake somewhere in the description takes hashtags whatever but it also wasn't that so now, here's why I I want to list this as number one why I left Etsy is because how do you how does Etsy protect a smaller seller from a bigger seller or vice versa or how does Etsy protect two sellers right from each other in a way and that's so sad that I have to explain this but I've seen other people who had similar situations it doesn't have to be like a smaller seller top seller situation but sometimes what will happen is the smaller seller I don't want to say small but you get the idea someone who doesn't have enough sales in comparison to the person that I don't want to say they're going after either because that thing's like a weird language to use but you get what I mean right if they're doing a copyright notice these top sellers sometimes will just fraudulently do a counter notice so you have the spectrum but how does Etsy kind of protect another seller regardless of what the situation is because what when that happened i had to put my two weeks i had to wait for the two weeks because if you if i remember um if i relisted them i don't even know if that was even an option but they were saying how like you could also have additional legal repercussions so my lawyer just said don't don't do it because like we're gonna we're gonna take it to court because i'm in canada they're in the states so it was like one of those really tricky situations but yeah a couple hundred dollars later out of my pocket everything got resolved but like that's a couple hundred dollars that i could have kept i'm not mad at my lawyer or anything but i'm just slightly upset because like imagine that happens to you and like this is someone you look up to because i started as a small business and these were people i shopped from so it's like really really we're gonna do that but yeah it did happen i'm not mad about it but what I'm trying to say is that I felt like Essie wasn't going to protect me. Um, so I'm like, bye-bye. So yeah, let's mention the other reasons why I decided to leave Etsy. The other reason I want to talk about is money reserves. Now the thing is, I'm actually not against money reserves. Especially when a first time happened to me. It's when you have a high amount of sales. This was around... This was literally on Black Friday. And it was so funny. Not on Black Friday. I think it was a Cyber Monday, sorry. And I was like okay fine whatever so here's what happened my money was put on reserve I had a high amount of sales it makes sense so when my money was put on reserve believe it or not I didn't care because I was like oh yeah it's not like they're taking my money they're gonna give it back it's not a big deal and I did honestly have a high amount of sales so I'm like this actually kind of makes sense whatever but the thing is Two days later, after they put my money on reserve, two days later, they're like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna put it on reserve anymore, like, bye bye And I'm like, okay, I thought it would have been longer. Now, it happened another two times, which, by the way, with the first scenario, it kind of makes sense. Black Friday, and then, you know, the weekend, and then Cyber Monday, like, obviously, everyone makes a lot of sales, but, like, whatever, I wasn't upset or anything, but I'm just saying, like, how is your AI working? How, how does that work? How does the SEO in that regard work? Because that, I don't know. I can't do, whatever. So the other two times my money was put on reserve, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because there was a lack of communication. Basically, my money was put on reserve, and I didn't check my email, so it's not a big deal. But 
Six hours later, when I did check my emails, it, the way my emails work might be different than yours, but my newest ones are at the top. But basically, it was saying, oh, your money is out of reserve. And I'm like, it was on reserve initially? So the gap between my money being put on reserve and being getting off of reserve was like six hours. The same thing happened another time, but it was only two hours. The gap, I'm like, okay, let's see what are you doing. Like, mm. Okay, so I am, I'm only mentioning this not because I'm mad at money with this or I'm against it. I understand why it's done, but I, I'm i kind of mentioning it in the sense that I see really bad when it comes to communicating with sellers. Like, And even if they do, like even if they did communicate, like I said, they did send me an email, they don't really explain why. And during that time, I did not have anything. Again, like I said, I don't care, but if you were to put my money... On reserve wouldn't you just wait a bit longer before you take it out of the reserve so I was like really really that was that one of them was like only a six hour gap and then the other one was only a two hour gap because you would think it'd be longer but I don't know so I do want to mention it because I'm like that's a bit weird they do lack communication I think everyone at this point already knows there's like a robot <laughs> behind us they lack communication uh, like horribly there's a bee actually that's a wasp one minute i did get rid of the bee it's a wasp it's not a bee but besides the point anyway the next reason why i decided to leave the Etsy is because of this guy my niche <laughs> my niche is very niched out i guess now i know a lot of pet products are available on Etsy but i, I have a bit of a unique niche i don't think a lot of people there are people who sell bird toys but I don't think so, it was a lot of people. So when someone goes on Etsy, they're more, mainly I feel like, again, this is just my personal opinion, they're looking at stickers, they're looking at beautiful illustrations, they're maybe looking at certain candles or gift boxes or uh, customized stuff. No, I feel like no one's going on Etsy.com. Even with cats and dogs, I think it makes sense, but they're not looking at like bird toys or toys for cockatiels or budgies. So I felt like my niche was very, it's not, I don't want to call it unique. There's obviously braids everywhere. A lot of people have braids, but I just felt like it was not really, like people do not really go to Etsy for braid toys, if that makes sense. They do, but it just was a slightly more different niche. Now the next reason, I feel like a lot of sellers will, will agree with me because it kind of is sad, but I even am guilty of it, is that people don't know you by your name, they know you by Etsy. So an example of that is I got this macrame, I think that's how you pronounce it, keychain. I put it on my backpack and one on my purse and I was out with my friends and my friend was like, oh my god, that's so pretty, where did you get it from? I did make this mistake. I said, I got it from Etsy. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that it's really hard to uh, build a brand on Etsy. I am guilty of it and I am a seller on Etsy. I made the same mistake and I'm assuming most people do this. They don't say... Oh, I got those toys from Feather Beautiful. My shop's name is Feather Beautiful, has my YouTube name. They'll probably say, I got those great toys from Etsy. Like, they're this nice seller, whatever. Right, great toys will show up, right? Um, so, that's also one reason why I wanted to leave Etsy. Because I just wanted people to know my shop. They wanted to know me. They wanted to know my customization on my website which i'm gonna have a new layout but yeah i i just felt like branding is limited and this isn't this is just my opinion i honestly think that once you become so huge sure but if you're a smaller seller it's hard to build a brand on etsy you do get a lot of customers but or potential customers but it's hard for customers to remember your name there is ways to help like putting post-it cards and you know doing like your boxes and um, branding a bit more but it's harder right so i i felt like a lot of people did not go to Etsy for feather beautiful nor did they remember feather beautiful so i'm like you know what maybe it's time to leave <laughs> so yeah that was one of the other reasons why i left the next thing i want to talk about is email list now initially when i kept hearing this i was like not that big of a deal it is i know some people are gonna say well technically etsy does notify their customers yes they do but very late so an example of that would be i actually bought one of catnip's uh stationary items and what happened is 
two days later, because I was like, I'm going to look and make sure nothing sells out. Which stuff sells out so quickly. So I'm like, I got to get my stuff on these um, enamel pins. I really like our enamel pins too. So anyway, um, two days later, Etsy sends me saying, hey, this cat and seller have new items. I'm like, I wouldn't even bought the stuff two days ago. Where were you? You were supposed to notify me earlier. Very important. So I think that's the one thing I really love of Shopify is that I do have an email list when a new collection comes out. I don't do anything spammy. Most sellers will not. Um, you run the risk of someone unsubscribing, but like I'll just send them one list saying, hey, just a heads up. We have a new collection. Check it out. Sort of thing. But you can't do that on Etsy. Etsy does the... Uh, they do the notification thing themselves and it's just pretty delayed in my personal opinion a lot of the shops that i wanted to buy from i would get noticed from like two days later i'm like okay thanks i guess but like i don't, i would have preferred knowing much much earlier last thing i want to talk about like super super last is inventory it was actually hard for me to manage my inventory like i said when i left etsy i did not leave etsy kind of cold turkey I strategically planned my leave, right? So because I strategically planned my leave, what had happened was um, prior to me leaving at the prior to me having these major issues, once I started getting a bit more um, popular, I guess, on Etsy, mainly on my Shopify is, I left because inventory was so hard. So imagine this, right? Let's say, and I make big toys too, or small toys too, you get the idea, right? But let's say I have four of this. Okay, I'm not selling this, guys. You get the idea. Anyone who has bird toys will know. I had a bee collection, so I use these. On Etsy, I would put four. On Shopify, I would put four. But then when one sells, I'd be like, okay, I have to put three, and I have to put three. And it'd be this huge confu confusion for me. And there were times when items sold out. And I had someone on Etsy order, but they were sold out on my Shopify. Now, this is, again... It's not going to be a major issue if you do certain stuff like stickers or illustrations sort of stuff. But for me, I hand do my toys. So if one item sold out, it's, it depends if I have the product. Because if I don't have the product, I will still make it. I've not ever had a situation where I completely like refunded that order. But what has happened is that that customer waited a bit longer. Inventory was super annoying for me. Managing inventory is completely my fault. This isn't necessarily an Etsy fault sort of situation. But um, yeah, uh, I had difficulty managing my inventory. I was also, this is important I say this, I had a lot of people that found me on Etsy come to my Shopify, but I also had many people finding me elsewhere, mainly Instagram, TikTok. I've even had people find me on Twitter and uh, they were going to my Shopify account. I never marketed my uh, Etsy account because I knew I was always going to leave. But yeah, these are some of the stuff I wanted to talk about. I think the copyright issue is one of the main things that kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. Um, but the other stuff, it was mainly management related stuff. But I think the copyright issue was like, I'm not per being protected in this platform. So I left. Yeah. And I wanted to be 100% transparent. Like with the DMCA, some people may not even talk about it. But I think it's important that I even mention it because there are so many people who have similar copyright issue related stuff. They don't talk about it. And the ones on YouTube that I see that t do talk about copyright related issues, it's a bit interesting because they're actually copying and then they're getting in trouble and then they're like, I don't want, I'm leaving Etsy, but it's not that they're leaving Etsy, Etsy kicked them off. I feel bad for saying this, but like, it's not, you didn't leave Etsy, Etsy said goodbye, <laughs> which is, which is horrible, I'm laughing about it, but like, it's not a funny thing, I don't know why I'm laughing, but like, that was not the situation with me. Um, so, yeah, uh, and again, I, I just genuinely felt not very protected. But on the good side, hindsight, I do have now a lawyer who <laughs> for things that I did not expect to happen. I, I think that's a very unique situation, but now I'm hearing more sellers who are kind of falling into a similar situation that I did with the copyright issue. Like, another seller is bullying them into deleting their listings and stuff. So, yeah. 
it's unfortunate but it does happen um and if that does happen you need to figure out what you want to do don't copy people don't use another seller's name right we, we already know that the po don't use copyrighted words all of that stuff that was again like i gave you guys examples that was not the case with my boxes foraging boxes those were some of the reasons why i left etsy i now primarily and only sell on my website i do have a small collection of my toys available at my veterinary clinic but yeah only a small collection but i sell mainly online so yeah it seems to have worked out really well for me but those were some other reasons why i left etsy uh, let me know if you guys are planning on leaving etsy if you are sticking with etsy i don't think etsy is a bad place i just think as i moved along the ladder it was just not the right place for me um but let me know what you guys think let me know how you guys are doing on etsy i've it's been over a year since i left um let me know how things are holding up for you guys if you guys left or if you guys are going back i know some people leave and then they also go back so that's also something that does happen it's okay it's not that the world um uh, get whatever you can do whatever you can for your business there's nothing wrong with that either but yeah uh, these were some of my reasons i hope you guys enjoyed the video it's a very long one but i really wanted to focus mainly on the dmca copyrighted related issue i think it's very important that i want to bring awareness and let people know about it right so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you for watching guys bye, -bye.